So the cruelest video game. I'm really interested to see what this is about. Seems like a really high quality video. The dungeon of fear and hunger. After a few moments of eerie silent exploration. Oh, it's a horror game. Okay. Encounter and are pursued by a massive ogre. <laughs> traps you in battle okay. Immediately. All right, the blur it. Cutting off your left arm. You are asked to predict a coin toss, right. which you find, Interesting. resulting in your character being beaten into unconsciousness. But I mean, I've never really heard of a game before where you lose body parts. It's one of the things I've always thought about, though. Is can can games actually do this? This is not game over. No. You awaken to the smell of rotting flesh. Now missing oh, then the game begins. I get okay. That was like the intro. Use to drag your destroyed body along with, emerging in a corridor of decaying corpses. You scramble in the darkness for something, anything. Ooh, I like this a lot already. Fortunately for you, you find it. What do we find? You have a bad feeling. Oh, it's the end. Oh, okay. What is that? That kind of looks like... All right. All right. It kind of looks like... Wait. Is that a mustache? It kind of looks like a serial killer. It does look like an alien, too. Like, what is this? You encounter a grotesque... That looks like, um... I can't... That looks like an evil wizard. You. That's what it really he looks like. You. He begins chanting, and suddenly... Oh, does that actually have chance? He... Is no longer what concerns you. I can't. Because I don't want links. Just because I don't want. Again, it's just not safe to click click on links too. Just co just copy and paste the title. I'll just search up the title. Yeah, I'm not putting links because I don't feel like the last thing I want is to get scammed on my own Twitch stream. Like I'm actually I do that. So if I put a link, I click on it, and then I get scammed. I don't want that to happen on stream. So that's why I don't allow links. Out of the darkness behind him. Something. Oh, I didn't even. Was that there the whole time? Some gigantic. Oh no, that's new. Okay. Is drawing closer. That's so cool. Every turn. You Bro, that's so eerie. I love this. Nothing. You beg. It does. Your moral doom approaches. Finally, the creature. I love this so much. This is so eerie. I love it. You are crushed with great pressure. Even this title, look at this title. Oh my god, this is amazing. Look, so like right off the bat, staring at you already, looks sad, holding a weird doll. This is scary too. It looks like a ghost because the body you can't really see. And this face is pale and not really clear. The audio design's great too. Also, can you hear the video just fine? Or is, or do I need let me know if there's any issues? If there's any issues with the audio, just let me know. And I'll raise it or lower it. But I, I, I love this already. Oh this is a bit louder. All right. F this broken game. I hate this. I would rather play literally anything else. Is that better? Else. I then watched as fear and hunger destroyed my entire life. When I am playing newer releases, I think right, watch it next game. When I am trying to select dinner at the supermarket, I think about this game. When my wife tries to tell me that the amount I think about this game is affecting our marriage, I think about this game. I hate Actually, this game. I can relate to this a little bit. So I don't know if you ever heard of the show More Oral. Let me search it up real quick to so you can see what, it, what I'm talking about. Moral oral so this is a sh tv show i watched it was on youtube so you can watch it free on youtube it was an adult swim show um the first season is very light and then it gets much darker it covers much darker themes for an entire week this show messed with my head i couldn't stop thinking about it so i definitely had a very similar experience is that guy irish they don't actually say in the show the whole point is like the joke is that um they make up a state called State Soda, and the whole premise is that the town's super religious, except they use religion to um, justify their own beliefs, and they're massive hypocrites. So, like, one of the jokes is the father, the father will keep saying, like, don't forget the 53rd commandment, son. I know this makes stuff up. And 
I love it. Fear and hunger is this bizarre. So I definitely relate to having something stuck in your head with some geniusly counterintuitive game design. But that only becomes obvious if you can push through the game's grueling. I'm gonna have to play this. Something a lot of people have not done. Fear and Hunger releasing in 2018, where outside a small rabbit right, five years ago. localized mainly in Russia and Eastern Europe, really? the game went largely unnoticed for nearly half a decade. Okay, that makes sense. Until last October, when I and other content creators... Ah, I see. Just like, just like the fate of all horror games, they are only successful once they're in a YouTube video. Notice it. But with barely a thousand reviews on Steam, this still feels like a game languishing in obscurity. Fear and Hunger doesn't even mod have him. All right, I'll mod him. Yeah, let's. Do you, do you want to be modded? If you don't, I won't. All right, I trust you. So uh, yeah, I, I trust you. If you if you feel like modding someone, if you think they're annoying, then yeah, you yeah, if you could ban or time someone out. Arado boy, day. What's up? That's a great, that's a great Twitch, Dave. Own Wikipedia page. Even Book Bumble has its own Wikipedia page. You're welcome. You've so been I here forever, too. I, I was thinking about doing it sooner. I, it is about time, I feel like. But yeah, if you feel like someone's being annoying, I guess you could time them out first if it's not egregious. And then, like... Yeah, if anyone breaks like the Twitch rules, they could get. Well, I think it'll filter it anyway. The purpose of this video is clear. Wait, don't ever feel any pressure to. The book Bumble Wikipedia page. My goal here today is to show you what this game is, and to do that properly. After, I'm later, going to have to just, pull just tell me it. Some of its mysteries, but I promise it's worth it. No matter what fear and hunger may resemble, there is nothing like this a game all right maybe so I'll, I'll think about and it jagged and captivating but above all it's cruel and so to start i'd like to explain exactly what i mean by that you seal your sanity climb each passing moment game design has been broken down into two major categories Games that are challenging and games that are punishing mm -hmm. games that i've never thought about that let me challenging. think about that for a second so games are challenging and punishing can it be both though? I guess it can. But what he's saying is either one or the other. Hey birds, are you freaking out? I think they're freaking out. But yeah, so so less is definitely. I guess it could be both. Let me hear what he's saying about this. Let me hear him explain it. Require a high degree of skill in areas like mm -hmm. decision making, pattern I found those games fun. timing, strategy, etc. Think games like Ikaruga, Celeste, Devil May Cry, or competitive fighting games. Any game where the act of surviving or succeeding is considered hard. Punishing games, on the other hand, don't generate their difficulty by being difficult oh i see what he's saying penalty that's inflicted on the player oh i get it so it's like those original arcade games where if you lose all your lives you have to start from the beginning i get what he's saying okay fail so take a game like hades it can still if be hades both though indefinitely feel like from where you die so more of one or the other people would beat it an hour or two and later probably not think about it again but by punishing death through forcing the player to start from the beginning this is how the game generates its difficulty, as well as letting it build its story and gameplay around that idea. Challenge is about your ability to overcome an obstacle. Punishment is the penalty for when you fail. And a game can be hard by being oh, such a great game. one Here's of these a... things. All right, real quick, let's talk about Spelunky 2. This game looks so easy. When you watch someone play it, it looks so easy. But... When you actually play it, it's so difficult, and it bothers me so much. It's, you think it should be easy, but it's not. Such a great game, though, actually. But I would argue, only becomes cruel by being both. And fear mm -hmm. and hunger is Oh, so if you're both, you're just cruel. Okay, that's what he's saying. The cruelest game I if you want to like, If you want to want me to watch a video, just put the title. I'll search it up on YouTube. ...ever played. The reason this is important is not difficulty for difficulty's sake, mm -hmm. but the nightmarish and captivating experience fear that and just looks creepy. I, shapes through the I, lo I love this game. I haven't even played it. The cruelty you can feel as soon as the game begins. Hey, uh, I just want to say that All right. because I have validation issues and seek approval through unreasonable means, 
I played the game on the harder terror and starvation difficulty. Mm -hmm. and Sounds if you something want I would the experience do. I'm about to spend the rest of this video describing. I advise you do the same. Okay. That's something I would do, I feel like. I always put put the hardest difficulty, unless it's um you die, you start from the beginning. You start the game by picking one of four characters. You're only going Unless it's like a roguelike where it's supposed to be that way. But if it's not, I I usually pick the hardest difficulty though. Being that there is a infamous knight named Lagarde who disappeared into the dungeon. Ooh, all right, so that's the premise. Hunger. Your goal being to locate Lagarde and escape the dungeon. Something you can actually do in under an hour. Ooh, so it's in short. Theory. I like that. From here, the game drops you into its opening courtyard. No tutorial, no direction, just I'll do it. I'll do that later. Dungeons gaping abyss. <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? You are immediately mauled to death by a pack of rabbits. Bro, they keep putting you in place immediately. I like it. My kind of game. Hear that knocking sound? That is the sound yeah. that will greet you every time you die and are booted back to the game's opening menu. It is the sound of a failed run, of lost progress, and of having to start again. You will hear it. A lot. Unless you're playing as anyone except Knight, who is objectively the best character in the game, the dogs are a nightmare that will shred your health in a couple of attacks and inflict multiple status effects, even initiating their own coin flip attack, which if you lose... Yep. Soon, you will learn that fighting the dogs is not a reliable option. Oh, so, so you're supposed instead, to, like, you run from them? escape into the castle. And, you know, if you if you time it just right, there's this corner that the dog's AI will catch oh, on. And, oh, hey, you've done you it. can't you've run. You've found a reliable way to survive the dogs that you can now I love this. every playthrough that... moving forward. Oh, I think there's you... nothing... Nothing evokes a sense of fear more than already... The game shows you immediately what happens as soon as you die. Right? And then after that, now they chase you. Now you're fearing death. Such a smart game mechanic. My brother had a four hour run in this game, so it can be long. Long swim was six and a half hours. I love roguelikes and I love games. Hey, birds, it's okay. Hey, 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 okay. But, um, I love games where you start from the beginning. I love them. And to the Gungeon's one of my favorites. God, no! What? Where's the. But how am I supposed to. No piece of shit! <laughs> I love this. What a great game. I love everything about yeah, this. See, while the structure of Fear and Hunger's larger map stays the same, the subsections of that map switch between different handcrafted layouts. Meaning, even the shit you can rely on, you cannot rely on. The dogs feel so random and unfair and cruel. And That's I good. And really I couldn't blame someone for walking away at this point. That adds but fear. Remember when I said there was no tutorial in Fear and Hunger? There actually is. Um, Wait, really? It's already started. You just don't know it yet. See, while the main entrance will oh, maybe my own result volume. in a conflict with the dogs, there's actually this sneaky little side passage. Oh, I didn't even notice it's that. Near as inviting as the main gate, it leads down into a set of dark stairs that the Ooh. dogs will not follow you down. Okay. And this, this is your reliable path forward that is a much bigger so that's a loser path for, for, for now, people who need to get out of jail pre-card this stairway leads down into a cramped basement crawling with eerie tentacled monsters there's also this big door with a crow on it I don't know what this is. I, it doesn't matter. Uh, Does it anyway, not do anything? The, uh, okay. Whom the basement's tight. I love the art style. It's so good. With. However, these creatures are nowhere near as dangerous as the dogs. Bro, and know what I love about this? There are people who spend all this money that make these high-tech games. This is all you need to make a good game. Just, just make some cool stuff. You don't even need to be like uh, a, a AAA company to make this stuff. Like, look how good this looks. That, this is where we can start to learn about fear and hunger's combat. The central Fits the style mechanic perfectly. of which is its limb dismemberment system. Rather I, than choosing I to love it. No, I'm not joking. This game took like eight years. It was made by two people. That's actually really good. I, Good for them. Because I, this looks incredible. Looks very well made. And also, I'm not joking when I say, I have actually thought about a game where instead of you take damage, you lose body parts. I have no jokes thought about this. 
one Undertale was made by one person originally, and then he hired a few more people. It wasn't all that many. Yeah, maybe like 20 total. But yeah, apparently like Toby Fox didn't really know game dev, so he used an en engine that didn't really require much coding. Really impressive. Yeah, it wasn't many people that made it though. To attack a single enemy in Fear and Hunger, you instead attack their specific limbs. This octopus enemy being broken into its left, right, and central tentacles, as well as its head. But the I thing like is this because it's extremely clear what's happening. With the dogs, it might be more difficult. With this, extremely clear. Clear. You knock off a body part, this goes away. This, this, and this. So so clear. I love it. It doesn't just get one turn. Each of these limbs has its own attacks, which Ooh, it will use on its own individual turn. Meaning, you're not fighting one enemy, but several. Yeah, it's this another great example of Undertale. You're right. Only few people need it. Your options being to attack each of the octopus's limbs one by one, or go straight for the head That's probably and difficult. knock that fucker out. <laughs> this is the correct option, unless you're playing as the dark priest whose weak little arms can't even land a proper kill shot Ooh, upon defeating your first okay. tentacled monster you will gain something that will change so that's strategy i like it perspective of fear and hunger nothing no items why would you get anything what you expect a reward for for killing him no why would you expect anything experience no level up Unlike oh, wait. I actually forgot. Yeah, I, I don't really play RPGs that much. No level up. Interesting. So, I think that's good for the game only because, even though I haven't played much of it, it seems like the type of game where you actually are encouraged to not fight enemies. Fighting enemies seems like a punishment. So, this is an example where I think it's actually a good thing. Every other game with RPG elements, you cannot. Grind it's discouraging you to fight. I think it, this is an example where it works. The basement and the dogs will be exactly as dangerous. And worse, the very next enemy you encounter will body you even harder. Oh wait! Oh dogs. my God! That just looks scary. It's frustrating. It's easy to feel like you're not making any progress. That this I, game I know that feeling. doesn't make sense. But the thing is, you are. And it does. While you may not have gained any stat increases or material advantage, think about what you've actually learned. One, there are enemies that you will not be able to overcome. Two, the most obvious path isn't always the way forward. Three, headshots are the only reliable way to take down enemies. And four, oh, okay. there is no inherent advantage in winning most battles. So it you're encouraged to dodge lot, enemies. These four lessons are how the game tutorializes you. They are the building blocks that will prepare you for the entire rest of the game. And now that you have them, you're ready to take on the game's first real challenge. The Ogre problem. Ooh, that just sounds scary. The guards, oh, right, saw in the beginning. ogre, as I like to call them, because calling them guards feels like referring to Godzilla as a scaly little fella, are the most common enemy in Fear and Hunger, and your ability to meaningfully progress in this game is going to depend on whether or not you can overcome them. And that might sound easier than it is. See, like the Octopi, one good <laughs> yeah, I, I, the I know. will result in a kill shot. But unlike the Octopi, you have a very low chance of actually hitting hitting an ogre's head, a chance you can increase by taking out both its legs and causing it to fall over, but it takes three whole turns wow. to do this, during which time the ogre will be free to use his cleaver to cut off your arms, which means no weapons or shields for you. It's so interesting. I love this. Game. What an interesting that concept. Sounds like a major disadvantage. It is. But don't worry, it's nothing a little child sacrifice can't fix. The ogre's right arm can initiate a coin flip attack, which if you lose, huh? well, we've seen where that leads. Oh, that's what that is, I think. This is the ogre problem. How do you prioritize which parts of him to attack without so the losing the majority love this. of your health or A game that makes you process? think. It's questions like that that the challenge of fear and hunger's combat comes from. And if you think that sounds difficult, Oh, 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 what? Buddy. Oh my sweet. That's too friend. many choices at once. That was wait. I would need. I would. Whenever there's that many choices, I just freak out. I would. It would probably take. What like ten minutes at least just to oh, make a decision. How do you deal with ogres? Well, I like to do it 
like this. This run? Wait, what is he doing? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, it definitely isn't a hardcore RPG game. Oh, <gasps> the strategy. I Let me like tell it. You a little story. Throughout Fear and Hunger, there's these bear traps placed around the dungeon, and stepping into one means losing both legs, which effectively ends your run unless you're willing to crawl through the game. No, that sounds stumps, horrible. Slowly starving to death as you go insane, which I wouldn't recommend. You could start a YouTube channel to experience basically the same thing. This is <laughs> so many of my early runs in Fear. So I genuinely really cannot undersell the dopamine explosion I experienced when I was caught by a guard and knowing that fighting him would likely lead to the end of my run, I scrambled through my inventory, found a bear trap and thought, fuck <gasps> it, let's see if this works. And then it did. Well, the, the, the thing game. I'm wondering though is this is the beginning, right? Will the game get smarter and eventually the enemies will like dodge the bear traps? I feel like guard now starting the battle with two damaged legs meaning his head was vulnerable from the first turn Ooh, i like this. this single moment i felt like the smartest man on the planet and it was amazing not only because the game's difficulty had forced me to think creatively under pressure mm -hmm. but because it led to a broader realization about fear. yeah i'm not the again i play all sorts of games so i'm always really open to uh, whatever and hunger this game is not an rpg it's an immersive sim if you're unfamiliar an immersive sim is a game where rather than asking you to engage with its world through one central system think shooting in doom mm -hmm. fighting in street fighter or platforming in mario immersive sims present you with a variety of systems oh. or options in how to approach. okay so it's like a horizontal versus ladder like a horizontal versus vertical approach where like the vertical is in um, you get one option and it shows gives you different tasks and horizontal is you have multiple different options and you pick and I think it depends on each game I, I like both of them are really fun I think like horizontal lends itself better to open world games and um making you think outside the box like for example Minecraft I think is a game that does this but also again that game that we're learning about does it's a problem and what I mean when I say fear and hunger is an immersive sim is that if you try to play this game like an RPG, you will get your face punched out through your yeah, ass. Yeah, it seems like you just you but need you to actually look at it like, like an immersive think sim, outside the box. This is where the entire game breaks open. Take, for example, the ogre problem. The bear mm -hmm. trap is just one solution. But say you don't have a bear trap. Another option might be to fling a red vial in its face i like this a lot actually it. so whenever the game presents you a problem instead of um grinding the game takes it away from you so you no longer have the option so now you're forced to think outside the box to think how can i solve this problem other than using sh sheer force i think this is extremely intelligent making it way less likely to land those devastating attacks we then have the two options we already mentioned, systematically cutting off the ogre's limbs, which can work if you have decent enough armor to soak up the ogre's lesser attacks, or just proving what a mad bastard you are to everyone and going straight for the head, which is risky, but if you have the accuracy raising eyeglasses equipped, it actually becomes a viable tactic. Wow, or okay. Maybe you don't do any of these things. Maybe you find an assassin's handbook learn how to make guard skins meaning that you can disguise oh, this game so and so ogres, smart letting you just slip by trivializing an entire part of the game we've just spent three paragraphs talking about and it's i love this so much i wish more games would do this and this is like almost one of the things that every game strives to do which is let you do anything i think this is one of the, a, a really good way to do it is instead of get, making it limitless this have a bunch of options and let the player choose depending on what happens. I really like this. That raises a really interesting question in Fear and Hunger. Is the real challenge of this game its battles or are battles just one small part of something much greater? Because of how we're conditioned to interact with RPGs, it's easy to go into Fear and Hunger assuming that battles are the most important part of it. But as you have the kind of experiences we just talked about, you'll start it, to understand- it take, Yeah, that's the thing, right? You're, you are right, because 
I know a game like Hollow Knight. Actually, how long did that game take? I know that was made by a team of two people, I think. How long did it take to make Hollow Knight? Four years. So it took four years, and they did certain things to make it easier to develop. And that was made by two people. And this game is also made by a small team. But because they wanted to give the player basically freedom to handle approaches in a horizontal way it took them more time but it definitely was worth it this game seems extremely good and the art again really good for the theme that it's going for and that way more important than bottles is your knowledge yeah that is really short you're right for only two people to navigate this i think world. they hired some other people but i it was really just a group of two three people trap, but it could have just as easily been when i realized <laughs> that if you have a stick in your inventory when fighting <gasps> those dogs you can actually throw it for them and these lovable little puppers will get distracted so you can oh, just I love this stab them to death but the kicker is that you could have also used that stick to craft an ultra valuable torch item why is this valuable areas are completely unnavigable that is a word i looked it up without so okay do you really want to spend a stick on this one encounter oh i love games like do you want this. to save it for later in the game as the encroaching darkness begins driving your party insane do you <gasps> really want to burn that red vial in the eye this actually reminds me a lot of don't star now that game doesn't actually have a goal. I'm assuming that you said this game was beaten, right? You beat it, took like a while to beat. A game like Don't Starve is kind of like Minecraft in a way where there's no goal, but the game presents you with a bunch of challenges and each challenge um, you takes a certain approach to beat. So so I really, I, I always have a great appreciation for games that take this because it's definitely not a game for everyone because it does, is a game that makes you think a bit but when you when you reach get, like solve a solution like this it's so rewarding and it's one of the reasons why i like to play games is of an ogre or should you have avoided that fight altogether saving the vial to burn through a locked door these are the dilemmas that fear and hunger will constantly hit you with even when saving your game as to do so you'll need to correctly guess a coin flip oh my god Failure what resulting in well some bad things what? however by holding shift which the game does not tell you you can actually spend a lucky coin to flip two coins instead of one but do you want to waste that coin on a game save or hold on to it to use in a you know there's different species in that cow night like birds i hope so too i heard there's it's like much more expansive i actually am really looking forward i think everyone is let's be honest i think everyone's looking forward to the next Hollow Knight game also with this coin idea I've never heard of a game ever making saving work as RNG. I think the only other game that's a really interesting saving mechanic is Majora's Mask. Because in that game, you can only have a, like an actual hard save after you play the Song of Time, which brings you back to the beginning of the cycle and you have to do everything over again. Yeah, that definitely is cruel. But then again, if you're playing a game like this, I think it's what you're expecting. And I think it's exactly what they're going for. And a game like this, I I'm loving this game. I actually really want to try it. Or to up your chances of surviving one of those agonizing instant kill attacks. The more you learn how valuable items actually are, moments like raiding the barrels in the opening courtyard become fucking enthralling as you mm -hmm. calibrate and recalibrate as each your item actually does something. With each new item. And the more you learn about these systems, the wider and more far reaching those revelations become. I actually want to see a speedrun of this game now. I'm actually, that's one of the things I want to check out after this. Um, for example, or maybe the later, major I'll choke stream. points are the mines, filled with dangerous balls monsters and particularly the ghosts which lie at the very oh there are ghosts too which normal weaponry will not so how are you supposed to beat them for me learning to navigate the mines and the fact that there's not ghosts fight them? are vulnerable to cursed weapons felt huge. oh okay but then 40 hours later learning that there was actually a secret passage <gasps> within a secret passage what? in a secret passage that i love this bypasses the mines completely it is the closest I've ever felt to one of those galaxy brain expansions. Yeah, that just seems galaxy brain too. 
so clever. So secret, 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 secret. Oh my. And think about how much time it makes with each path probably is something in it that has like another path that must have took so much time to make. Memes. And moments like this are what led to my realization that the real fear is getting a hold of you. I love games that have like text like that too. It's not stats or items or money, but knowledge, your understanding of what this world is mm -hmm. and how to move through it. This renders an earlier statement of this video that of a foolish child. If you're playing as anyone except Knight, who is objectively the best class in the game, Knight is good the combination because again of right because it's because it's a horizontal approach all of a sudden the damage you deal doesn't matter as much because you have different approaches also there's just random spots in the game where you press a button you get all three members of infinite of a certain item when you learn this never because you never learn this i have a sneaky suspicion that they may have done this for bug testing that's the only reason why i think they would never tell anyone is they may have included these mechanics for bug testing. For example, the shift for double, I guarantee that was for bug testing. And and they, instead of removing it, it's just like, oh, correct? Okay, that's good to know. Of her armor, that's the only the reason why I think they would have as it. As well as her speckable ability, fast attack, which once activated, lets her make two actions per- They beat the game in three minutes? All right, since it's that short, as soon as I'm done with this video, we're going to check out that speed run. Turn means she can both. I just type the title in the, in the chat. Beginner players will make, as well as giving those players an extra turn to experiment and learn, which makes her a really solid starting option and objectively okay. the best character in the game in combat. However, think of everything we've just talked about and how every advantage of night is linked exclusively to battles in terms of navigating fear and hunger's world and interacting with it as an immersive sim night has no advantages at all now compare that to mercenary okay. a character who stats wise is far weaker than knight however what does not it do? only can his lock picking ability allow him to bypass any lock in the game oh. saving those red vials for flinging in the eyes of people who disagree with you about anime <laughs> but he can also be specced with the ability escape plan giving him a much higher likelihood of successfully escaping battles as well as the ability dash which lets him move at double speed oh that's huge all right other I, that might actually Actually, for certain people, that may actually make up for the nice extra damage is the speed. Especially because you can run from enemies too, and this you can get through sections faster. Or PG, the combination of these two abilities would be a convenience, but in fear and hunger, they are game changing, as you will now be able to outrun most enemies. And so that's the character you play for if you want to outrun. They catch you, trivializing both the opening dogs as well as the 30 minute time limit you have if you want to reach the guard alive. Meaning, if you know what you're doing, you can hit credits on this game without engaging engaging in a single battle i guarantee that's what the speed run does isn't it so then knight is the best character asterix in combat second asterix at the beginning Bird of the reveal? game because i mean i don't know if you could see them there oh actually check you should be able to see them though i guess not here i just move it up a bit real quick you can't really see them that well yeah, I have a blue one and a yellow one. Maybe later I'll show a picture on stream. As you see, the Outlander, who can also be specced with Dash, has the highest base attack. Let oh me... no, how I assume the noise? On um, this simple answer is um when I go to bed, they they go to bed with two. So they're actually really good with that. They don't actually stay up. The only downside is sometimes if there's like a loud noise, they'll wake up and they'll start flying around and freaking out. So what I have to do is I have to, even if it's like like in the middle of the night, I have to turn on the light so I don't hit their head against the wall and like receive brain damage. And I have to be fast so I don't want them to get hurt. I'm hit like a goddamn meteorite as well as occasionally breaking locked doors, saving on those ultra valuable small keys. And you can't, I don't know if you could hear the birds now, but the way they sound, this is why, this is why I love birds. Also be specced with the skill Devour, which lets him ease defeated foes, practically eliminating his hunger mechanic from fear and 
hunger. That's huge. His starting defense is low, equipping him with All right, the I love that. Oh my god, so smart. Each, I love, all right. I think these characters are extremely smart because what do we have? We have one that does damage for the people who like damage. One that gets rid of hunger, so now you don't have to worry about hunger. And then there's speed if you don't want to fight anything. And then what is the... What about the other one? armor you're likely to find over the course of the game will eventually make him just as durable as nice as well wow. as a late game item that will let him move twice per turn. Meaning, if you can struggle through a particularly brutal early game, you'll be left mm -hmm. with a character with all the advantages of nice, but who can move at double speed. Wait, he's objectively harder. good as knight? Oh, is it just not listening? I think it was when I turned my head back. Okay. And with much easier hunger management. And if you think that's crazy, well, let's talk about the Dark Priest, who still sucks. Lowest attack, lowest defense, his little body too frail to hold any decent weapons or armor, his necromancy spell doesn't even do anything. I genuinely do not understand what kind of loser picks the Dark Priest. <laughs> like, what is so empty about your life that this <laughs> is the character you go with? What all this means is that making a successful run in Fear and Hunger means synthesizing together your knowledge of its monsters and how to overcome them, its map and how to navigate it, the strengths and weaknesses of your character as well as your understanding of the game's items and creativity in how to use them but the I, the more i go with this video with the more i love this game is that 99 of items in fear and the more oh that might change the future all right before he even says anything the only reason why i think he might use him is for a challenge run if the game isn't hard enough for you already and you want a challenge run, maybe you would use him. That's the only guess I have. Hunger are randomized. You don't even know what items you're going to pull from a specific So each one is different. Crate, it's like a roguelike. You don't even know what tools kind of, you're going not to be approaching these obstacles with. Or what resources you're going to be able to fall back on. And that's a problem. Because the longer a run in Fear and Hunger lasts, the more difficult the mere act of just keeping Marriage. your party alive and right. sane becomes. Each character has both a hunger and mind god I know this game constantly had marriage. drain over time. And letting either drop below 50% can have disastrous effects on your like what? As characters suffer mental breakdowns and usually what? winnable battles become party when you get like massacres. A full party... So this is like real life the video game. If... If... So this is like if a video game was actually realistic. I love this. Why has no one ever made this before? Do we get to have kids in the game? Yeah, it's <laughs> a good question. I guess, I guess we'll find out for sure. Constantly draining your supply of food and sedatives, and that's alongside the healing items you'll need to recover from the inevitable damage you will take, as well as the constant supply of torches you'll need to maintain. Mm -hmm. Failure to do so in the wrong area, meaning you'll be left scrambling in the pitch black darkness, no idea where to go or what now, to do. Now, if you were faster, this wouldn't affect you as much. Energy. And again, you could just start a youtube channel to experience the exact same thing this is all all right, all right real quick since he said it twice let's look at this guy's youtube channel real quick since he's talking about how bad it is i want to see this guys all right let's see bro this channel is popping off what are you worrying about wait was this his first no he has po videos pop off he doesn't i used to like that one got the most but still like this guy pops off Anyway. On top of the 30 minute time limit you have to reach the guard, as well as the multitude of different status effects that you'll need specific items to cure. And what this all means is that each new step down into the dungeon of fear and hunger becomes this right, anxiety find out. Right. inducing nightmare that made me realize something. Fear and hunger is not just an immersive sim. Hmm? It's also a survival horror. The way survival horror games uh, well, that kind of goes horror, that's kind of what was implied, but okay. Two steps. The first is the steady chokehold they place on your resources, mm -hmm. creating this ever-looming threat that you will encounter something that you do not have the help, bullets, or sanity to mm -hmm. overcome. That anxiety That's a really tough thing too, because there are a lot of games where they'll give you bullets and sometimes you have to question why are you giving me a number a certain number of bullets? What's the point? Or a certain number of ammo. What's the point of having a number? 
I think there are a lot of games that have this problem, and they and like they don't actually need a, a number of resources. They only exist. Maybe they exist to have you explore. But other than that, the number doesn't really matter. But whenever a game actually makes the resources matter and makes you think about each one, I love games like that Leaving so much. The player in an emotionally vulnerable state that the second step can happen. Like the um, actual scares, which are now able to tap into something more primal, real, and frightening. Fear I never Hunger played Resident Evil, by the way. I know I need to play it. resource management, but what I was not expecting is how disturbingly it handles the second. When you start Fear and Hunger, most of what you'll encounter are dark takes on fantasy tropes. Mm -hmm. Ogres, imps, lizard men, etc. And while it is stressful, it isn't really frightening. But there's a moment mm -hmm. for me where that starts to change. Wait, when does it change? The further down the dungeon you go... I the play horror games. All right, I'll be honest. I don't play that much. The only ones I've played was... Um, I played like Five Nights at Freddy's. I played pretty much all of them. That's the extent, actually. My brother's played much more. He actually plays Dead by Daylight a lot. I know it's not really his horror. He plays on. He has played all the Resident Evil games. Not all of them, but he's played a lot. But yeah, I don't really play all that many horror games. Where the nature and reality of this place begin to invert in on themselves as the creatures you encounter begin to distort and separate from any established fantasy idea or conventional norm. Like a later enemy that looks like a pregnant what mannequin. What? Oh yeah, I see the it. Baby what? To fall out of it onto the floor in front of you and turn by turn. What? Slowly crawl. Oh, now that's feet creepy as hell. And raise its knife. <gasps> I don't even know what to do. <laughs> this is it. funny, bro. You're, it's a giga chat. <laughs> the harvest men, which. Don't yeah, even I, attack. They, yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of horror games. Same with movies. Like, I'll watch them if I'm watching with someone else, but like, I, it's not saying I go out my way. Just stand there, reaching their long limbs out. Like, it's kind of hard to be scared, but he's with a giga chats after wait, you. Video edit here. That's not all they do. Do not fight the harvest men. I repeat, do not fight the harvest right, men. I guess... Also, I'm not even gonna talk about what's in this hut, but uh, it's bad, so enjoy. Uh, that's um, I'm gonna go in anyway. No, actually, all right. I love how he's making me want to play Survival the game so bad. Combination. <laughs> Anxiety-inducing resource scarcity followed by the genuinely horrifying things you encounter. It creates a kind of emotional pressure that pushes on you more and more with each new step you take. And where the game elevates that pressure into straight up dread is with some fucking amazing atmosphere through sound design. There's one track mm -hmm. later on called The Tomb of Gods where you have this chasm-like soundscape but then out of it rises this ethereal voice that sounds just a little too high to be human. Accented by these sinister clinging bells mixed in a way that makes it sound like around the next corner might just be waiting Jump. some ancient terrifying ritual just beyond what you song will see. come out at any moment maybe my favorite way the game creates dread through its sound however is the track city of ancients in oh it, i love whenever i love abandoned cities and games like city of tears and hollow knight for example it's that knocking sound we've come to associate so empty with the beginning too. of the game. But whereas before it sounded close, as if we're standing next to it. So creepy. Now it sounds distant. So what is that? Far away and smothered by some gigantic black. There's something fist. bigger. There's a bigger it's fish. Such a subtle but incredible way for the game to whisper to you that the place you started is now very far oh, away. Oh, that's what it means. The place okay. You are is unfathomably deeper and darker. So it's like, it's like, it's almost like if you go to hell and then you are such a bad person that now. And you go deeper to hell that all of a sudden you're in the deepest pits of hell and all of a sudden uh what you thought was bad is nowhere near as bad that's what it seems like and what awaits below is only what is below i actually want to know 
This all combines to make Fear and Hunger a goddamn masterclass in anxiety and dread. But there is one part of this game where that dread spirals into flat. All right, what is it? Terror. It is 2 a.m. I am sitting alone on me and my wife's oh, I see. bed, playing Fear and Hunger on my Steam Deck. I'm exploring an area I've been... Bro, actually, you can say what you want, right, about the dark. There, There's this weird fear of the dark that even, I feel like, for a lot of people, just never goes away. Because just the, the feeling of knowing that there could be something there, and you can't see it, 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 there's a there's a weird terrifying fear to it which again this game is great because for example this like farther out it's dark you don't know what's there fun fact i got mentally sick and sane when i'm surrounded in much too much darkness it's a phobia i don't have that but i could definitely see that i could definitely see that because to be honest i still do sometimes like have a bit of fear of the dark because it can be scary because there's a thing like you never know like what could actually be there and I feel like for someone like you, no wonder you haven't stopped thinking about this game. Because even this, not only does it look eerie like this statue, like, this looks creepy. Like, it looks like it's almost looking at you, too. But what's beyond the darkness? Through half a dozen times, when suddenly... And then the music. Yeah, what is a terrifying presence? It's all dark. You have no idea. I'd seen this message before, and by now, assumed it was just the game trying to fuck with me. I ignore it and go- You can't sleep on multiple lights on. My brother also used to scare me. It was 3-4, jump scares me in the basement. That's good, <laughs> bro. It's kind of messed up. I, I, I don't blame you at all. Actually, I know um this is one of the things my dad does. I know it's different, right? But it's, it is kind of similar. My dad always sleeps with the TV on. Now, I would imagine that I could definitely see that being scary, though. Because, um... Um, just because you're hearing noises and like it's dark out, but but the TV on, is on. But um, I would imagine too. Um, when it comes to something like that, like it must be nice to. How much lights do you have on? Like, is it like bright or is it just like um s s dimmer lights so you can actually sleep? I mean, do you have like a thing too that covers your eyes to block out light? Like that might help. I don't know. I don't really know. But yeah, I, I could, I, as long as YouTube video, I'll try not to laugh, YouTuber TV, it's fine. You're afraid of Dark Souls Mountain Child? Yeah, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not saying, like, every time I go and go into the bathroom, I'm scared. It's that sometimes, like, when it's, like, 3 a.m. and I watch, like, something that's a bit scary, like, um, uh, I could get scared, a bit, like, sometimes I'll look in the dark for, like, a bit of fear, but not that much. But I do have something. My room is, like, pitch black shut with full light on. Okay. Here's something my dad told me he used to do, which I find crazy. So my dad loves horror movies, right? And my dad is a railroad, railroad mechanic, so he works on trains. And he used to work a lot of night shift. Well, he only works on night shift now, but he used to do a lot of overtime when I was younger. All right, because we got a new house who's making money for it. But one of the things he used to do on the shifts where it was a lot slower, he would go into um, a train car where it was pitch black, have a TV, and it would have like a small TV, and he would buy get rent a movie and would play it in the in the train car where no one's there in complete darkness so that kind of shows like how much my dad loves horror movies and that added to the element of horror that's something i don't know if i could do but but it sounds like a very interesting environment but my business to watch horror man. movies in. hey wait i've never seen that enemy before uh what, wait what, what? The, oh, oh. that Bro, that just looks. Any time I see like, like a hu like something that looks human but not like this, for example, just looks wrong. The thing is about hungry. My, my bad. I need to pee. My bad. I literally can't leave the room until I forget about this game again. School prep. I know that that has. I definitely even like when I was younger. Actually, no, I, I just got a memory. When I played like Five Nights at Freddy's when I was younger, I remember I used to be scared of. Of the dark. That was when I was like mostly scared of the dark. Now I'm not anymore though. Right, but I know what that's like. But oh, man, so like, do you have like a flat? No, even like a flashlight. I feel like it's still like too dark though. Okay. Oh, 
Oh Jesus! Oh sweet Jesus! Oh God! Wait, what, what is happening? Oh my what God! What is happening? This run-devouring monstrosity is the Crow Mauler, a creature who takes inspiration very directly from Silent Hill 2's Pyramid Head. It's another game that fact, I feel like I need to play. A lot of references in Fear and Hunger, which I don't really get anything out of, but depending on how much you enjoyed the Super Mario movie, you might. Pyramid Head was, in concept at least, a stalker enemy, a dangerous, near-indestructible creature that pursues the player Oh, that's the game. okay. And I love stalker enemies. The concept of something that I've... bears obeys the rules of this world while hunting you through it is that does so look scary all right and terrifying however that terror can quickly turn to goofy irritation if a yeah, stalker isn't true. sufficiently challenging or punishing this is not a concern you will have with the crow mauler at Why? any point during a battle he can launch one of several game derailing attacks he can use his maul to smash the bones of your party yeah i do you watch watching horror game plays? I do too. And there are certain games, especially like story games. Some I'm not like again, I'm not the biggest like RPG guy. So like sometimes I'll watch someone play an RPG and not play it. Like I did that with Undertale. Delta Room though is is a game I might play by myself. Like when it finally comes out. I don't want that's one of the things is I don't like the if something's like comes out in installments, I wait till it comes out fully. Don't really know. If I'm scared, I'll just wait till the for the day. Are you trying to fight my fear? But it doesn't go away. My concept is you know, obscure. I see smileys everywhere. Yeah, the thing is, that's not easy to conquer, right? This is actually something I talked about before with fear. Is um, ah, uh, what courage means, and um, the thing with courage. And I used to think when I was younger that courage just means that you're not afraid of things. But what courage actually means is um, you are you're afraid of something. But you still do it anyway, despite being afraid. That's what courage is. It's it's a it's the look fear in the eye. Like you're still afraid, but you still do it despite that fear. Now again, I don't know what the solution is. I'm not gonna try and like come up with a solution, but I do hope eventually you do find something. Or if you don't, at the end of the day, like I don't think it's the end of the world. It's really up to you. Like we got like we watched that Henry David Thoreau video about how to live your life. It's your life. It's really up to you. Like, if it's like something that's worth pursuing, and even how, like, the fears of the minor seem very difficult to solve because it's it's completely mental. So it's not like you can even take something to heal it. Like, if you have an infection, you could take antibiotics, you could cover it up. It's simple. But with when it's something's me mental, all of a sudden now it's much more difficult because the only way to solve it really is with mental leaving them permanently debuffed he can rip out their eyes causing them to go blind so is there any is there any escape character and most frighteningly of all his peck attack will without a so you're just dumb. Toss, kill one of your party no members. no coin okay Encounters with the crow this is ruthless nightmares massacres in which you and your party hobble away from let's not forget marriage all right I, I'm actually really curious about this resources and while you can avoid him he has a tendency to burst through a wall and That's attack you at the up. worst possible time and it's in those moments you can feel your meticulously planned hard fought run wait a minute wait a minute, on wait a minute. The edge. can this guy ruin speed runs i just thought of this like this is scary and all but for a speed run can your speed run be messed up and like ruined because this guy comes in and paid rng of oblivion the i don't know how long it's like a time he is maybe <laughs> I love this. yes so not only is he like horrible for players he's horrible for speedrunners too i love this the purest distillation of fear and hunger is cruel the one killer and it is that cruelty that makes this game what it is there's even multiple points where the game will just kill you outright for selecting the wrong option, like asking you do you want to climb down a toilet, and if you yeah, do, that seems safe. you don't even get a game over, you're just trapped there so forever. The lesson being, don't do that, stupid. And in any other All game, right, that's this fair. just feel cheap. But in Fear and Hunger, it's just part of the cruel core that mm -hmm. is this game. Death is always a lesson. And when I started, this all felt so random and pointless and unfair. But the more I played the game, the more I'd hit these points and find myself going back over the choices that had led me there, picking apart what I could have done different, learning from it, and then... There's a lot of value, actually, because... 
we, you don't really see games made like this anymore. And I think it's great that a game like this was still made. Because the only time you, you, like, the time you'd see games we learned from mistakes is, like, original Nintendo games. And as games have gotten better, you don't really see games anymore where you only th learn through your mistakes. Like, you still do, but they're much more lenient. And even games where you start from the beginning, even though games, those games are much more lenient. So it's great to see a game that, again, like that, like this, where that is extremely punishing. And again, it's the, there for people who, who want this. Reapply too. that knowledge in my next run. That loop is maddeningly addictive. Mm, I get it. I play roguelikes a lot. World in the way that it's asking you to. That is the true challenge of this game. And it is fucking enthralling. Oh, he didn't bleep that out. He failed to bleep that out. Piano. And Unless it's deep enough in the video, YouTube doesn't care. It's either one of the two. I mentioned before, I get up several mornings a week and cycle through the freezing Dublin or what is? Oh, this is like MMA? In Jiu -Jitsu. Oh, those Brazilian are both very technical activities that you mm -hmm. slowly get better at by making mistakes. And True. fear and hunger, it fires my brain in that same way. And combined with the game's atmosphere, its mystique, its... I'm gonna be honest, you seem, this seems like the type of game where I play a few times and then after I get into it, every time I lose, I'm like, all right, I'm done for the day. I'll play it tomorrow. I was like, a game like this, I would find fun, but I don't think I'd be able to play it like, like once or twice before, before I'm like, all right, I need a break. Then again, I haven't played it. It is a roguelike and roguelikes are games. I tend to play like 5 million times before I finally like, all right, I need to go to bed. It's like, uh, this, this sun's about to come up in three hours feeling of discovering just what is that oh my god uh, like because what i think what makes it so eerie is the face doesn't look like where it should be it just looks like a human but then it's just wrong you're an absolute roguelike master i played a lot actually one of my favorite roguelikes is on um, rogue fable 3 if you never heard of it it looks like Lord and Ramsey. <laughs> when you point it out, it does. I didn't even no notice that until now. Um, real quick, it, it, since you like roguelikes, um, Rogue Fable 3. And when I, in my opinion, this is one of the best roguelikes I've played. If you're looking for a good roguelike, I think it's like $15. No, it's $10. If you, if you need a good roguelike, extremely good. This could, You could probably spend like 300 hours on this. Easy. Yeah, if you're looking for a roguelike, highly recommend this game. A piece more of this nightmare with each run, it makes for a horrifying and captivating experience that I think you should play. But unfortunately, that is a recommendation. Mm -hmm. I'm, going to have I'm to definitely going to play this. The thing is, process. because of the stuff he's blurring, it seems like this isn't a game I could play on stream. Now, this is does seem like something I could make on YouTube, but... It seems like extremely difficult. I could make a video talking about my experience, I guess. But I'm definitely going to play it nonetheless. Technically, Fear and Hunger is kind of a mess. There's several areas mm -hmm. that drag my frame rate into single digits. And one or two points... Oh, my if it does that to your PC, then mine would just die. Oh, there's a mod that does that? Oh, then I could stream it then. Perfect. I'll do that. I'll figure out... Like, not me. I'll figure out that eventually. But, um... When it, if talking about frame rate, that's the one thing. Like, I'm, if if that's an issue, I might sh I might not be able to stream it then because my PC is a potato. It was originally built to play modded Minecraft, nothing more, nothing less. And the graphics card I have is a GT 730. And just to show you how bad it is, GT 730. Like, we looked this up. The reason I got it was it was fifty dollars on Amazon. Yes, yeah, actually it went up. Yeah, it was like 60, actually it was close to $60. But yeah, this is a graphics card I use. It's complete garbage. And I got it so I could play modded Minecraft at 30 FPS. All right, this person is not for gaming. Liar, not for modern gaming. If you're playing, um, if you're playing like, uh, not as high tech games, it is for gaming. Just don't play God of War or something crazy with it. Hey, yeah, exactly, because... I built my PC for $500, and I just wanted a PC, and I never built a PC either. Oh, you're using a laptop? That's fair. Yeah, because I do intend on getting a better PC, but I just wanted something, and I think, because again, all the games I care about playing, I could play on console anyway. 
like and most indie games to be fair don't require a crazy uh requirements like minecraft as you just need a graphics card in order to play modded minecraft and ram like if you don't have ram you're screwed game would consistently freeze killing my run if you don't understand that's, what fear and hunger that's frustrating and the reason why is because not only is that not intended i'm assuming but when is super lucky tales an indie game that's a good question let me actually look it up so oh indie i don't actually know it is super lucky tales indie Seems like it was still by a studio. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it was indie. But yeah, I hate when like game crashes happen because it it's out of your control and it's just completely random. It is. It's easy to believe that the game is unfair and random, but these crashes show what actual random unfairness looks like, and it fucking sucks. Oh yeah, I get, I get his point. I get his point. Like the game makes you feel like it's random BS. But it's showing you that what actual random BS feels like. I get what he's saying. On Steam Deck and ran into these issues far less frequently on PC. But oh, it's, it's only silly. Steam Deck. If it's only Steam Deck, then I, I'll do a, I'll record it first. Let's just to see how the FPS is. And I'll definitely stream it eventually, though. I have, I'm so Hunger intrigued. Is the kind of game <laughs> that devours plane rides, and while it has the Steam Deck compatibility tick, it oh my God, it's I chugging. Go because Fear and Hunger is made by mostly one person, which is a I'll tell you what I wanted to tell you after this video. Felt my ADHD trying to distract me. Don't worry. Fucking achievements. But my two other issues are less excusable. Fortunately, during the creation of this much video, left someone in it. actually released a mod that cuts out all the more. Thank you. All right. Content, all right. You brought which, it up, and there oh it boy, is. would have been handy to have a month ago. But what it means is that anyone can now play it, as well as the game being fully streamable. And stream it, I shall, over on twitch.tv forward slash super eye patch wolf this Friday. Right, shout out to him. MST. And that excites me greatly because when fear and hunger spins together in just the right way, the emergent narratives and I'll link you guys' video too after this. Pure streaming gold. And it is one of those narratives that I want to end this video on. But before I do, I just want to acknowledge that if you feel like this video has maybe pulled back a few too many of Fear and Hunger's mysteries, its sequel, Fear and Hunger Terminator, Wait, there's a second? actually released at the end of last year. So here <gasps> is an entire other bigger game built with the same design that you thought oh, for you to absolute just discover legends. for yourself. Now, here is my journey through Fear and Hunger. Against my better judgment, and because I've never really gotten over Casca, I started with the knight, taking advantage mm -hmm. of a strong early game, rolling good enough so, items so that a let true me gamer save we the have right here. from the prison, as well as the weird dog from the cave, recruiting both and battling my way through the game's lower floors. And as I did, something started to dawn on me. I knew which fights to take, I knew which to avoid. Every death, every lesson from previous runs, was now materializing in this meticulously laid out plan that was mm -hmm. now spinning together into a Sounds like a role like to me execution that honestly was mildly euphoric as I started to feel like, oh my God, I'm actually doing it. I'm actually going to make it. But there was I also love that feeling. something else. I had that feeling with um, Enter the Gungeon. The feeling, because that's one of the reasons why I love Enter the Gungeon, because it's a pure measurement of skill. Now, there is RNG with the guns you get, but for all intents and purposes, it's highly dependent on your skill. So, as it's every time you get um, on a certain level more consistently, then it's a measurement of saying, all right, so you're better at the game at a certain level where you're getting here consistently. And then when you finally start getting to the fifth floor, the final floor, is when you're finally like, I have a chance to beat the final boss. It's a great feeling. I love it. Dread knowing that one wrong decision or mistimed button press could all the fear you all must be feeling crumbling down. My hands were beginning to cramp. <laughs> I could feel the sweat on my controller as I my hands are sweat all the time. So mere moments I, I, left on sucks. the clock. Like my hands are sweating I was right now going for no to reason. Do it. The end was finally. Oh God! Oh Jesus! No. no! Still, I managed to rescue Lagarde. Adrenaline pounding through me as I shot back up through the dungeon. Oh my God! Floors, I, I'm, I'm to feeling a little too. Enemies I'd left Not adrenaline. But I'm still nervous for this guy. Scrambling through its corridors, go, go, tense go. and terrified as the crow mauler never felt more than a few steps away, until finally we 
reach the game's opening courtyard, my party beaten and broken and missing limbs, but alive. It's fine. It's we fine. Those don't really it. matter anyway. And I felt genuine happiness for them. Both they and I had escaped the dungeon escaped hell. of fear <laughs> and hunger. I had beaten. You the finally game. had the weight lifted off your shoulders. Only. Why did Lagarde go back? What? What what was that weird moment after you rescue him where he glances up a hallway that we, we don't we don't need to go down? Well Wait, is this guy matter. mentally crazy? What matters is I was now free. My life was mine again to enjoy the sun and the grass. It, and it's the game the never leaves you. Market. Maybe if I cook a <laughs> delicious enough meal, my wife will come back no 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 i don't want to go back no 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 i began a new playthrough of fear and hunger you started another the playthrough class i picked was the dark priest oh god oh, before he gets into this i just want to say there's such a unique feeling of beating a game because for me whenever i beat a game i just can't help reflect on all the moments I've had playing that game because it it's it, it's something you don't notice but when you finish playing a game it leaves such an impact on you and I think it goes with any game is you can't really stop thinking about it until a certain period of time it really depends on the game like even like when I played for example the thousand year door that did leave an impact to me for a few days I couldn't help but think about the impact it left on me and the memories I had I still think of it every once in a while not as much and it's one of those things too where whenever I play a game, if there's more content, I'll usually do it a bit more. But eventually then I'll stop and I'll be like, all right, I had enough. I, I'm not the person to 100% games. Damn it. Okay, the Dark Priest is the worst character in the game until you realize that you can use necromancy Ooh, to resurrect wait a ghouls minute. and skeletons who join your party, fitting them out with all the armor so and the worst character you becomes are the too best. weak to carry. But the real brain explosion moment came Here we go. when I entered an altar and was given the unusual option to what? show love to my zombie servants. Wait a they minute. To what? Liquefy, merging, ceasing to be two separate beings, but becoming one. Marriage, the brand. Oh, I. That's that's creepy as all hell. Oh my New god. New character class who could use the spells of the necromancer, wield the armor and weapons so you're of the more knight, OP. With an even greater offense than the outland. So the weakest character actually is the most OP if you play right. Able to break down <sighs> doors in a single swing. I started to feel unstoppable using everything. Wait, wait. I guarantee his run comes crashing down whenever that crow human comes and just puts him in his place. I'd learned to lay waste to this dungeon. That same euphoria roared. I tried 100% games percent on the game. Yeah, me too. Like Mario games, I usually 100%. Other games, not as much. Back, but it's spending on the person and the game too. Again, I rescued Lagarde, but this time I went north at the place he hesitated. What? Only to be met with a giant locked door. Wait, what? But how? How do I get it? Wait a minute. I had never figured out what that strange artifact was in the weird racist He's village. He's down the rabbit hole. Run. He's soon too deep. Yes, yes. Unload your secrets upon me, game. Please and troll him. Troll him. I would come to learn something terrifying. Troll him. This was Fear and Hunger's half way point. What? Once again, I watched as the game destroyed my expectations of oh it. Oh my god. Because you see, somehow, beneath everything else I had overcome was now more? a giant ancient city filled with the carcasses of gods That's and the enemies city. so unfathomable and terrifying. I died you can't lose now. And over <gasps> and over, yet I could not stop. Over and over, I hurled myself against this place. More lives, more bodies. Never enough. My party was not strong enough. I became obsessed, crawling through my memories of this game. Did you read Marriage? Yeah, I, what do you mean? Like, I read, like, the thing. I didn't read it aloud, though. Wait, did I miss something? 
ever I hurled myself against this place. But it yeah, he mentioned what it is. This game, desperate for something, anything. And that's when I remembered that door in the basement at huh? the beginning of the game. What had it said? What type of key did I need? <gasps> oh, Jesus. Oh, God, no. You need to beat the crow. No, not that. Anything but that. Anything but him. After many hours of experimenting, I defeated. Oh, you need to be clever. You need to use every tool to your advantage. The crow mauler. I claimed my prize of the miasma sword, a blade so powerful. Now you can't that die. If you die, it's all you wasted insane. it. And still, its power was not. Enough. You wasted everything. Still, the game rejected me. And that's when it happened. See, remember that floating head encounter? Yeah. At the beginning what about of the it? game? This is Nashra. And I developed quite a fascination for him. Why? Whenever I'd get the Gore Corridor cutscene, I'd return to him, trying to glean what little information I could before Wait, being secrets? crushed to death. But that's when I discovered that by carrying the Cube of the Depths as well as the Eclipse Talisman obtained by talking to mm -hmm. the Eastern Priests, Nashra can join <gasps> your party. Now you can win. And so with him, combined with the strength of the Miasma He's Sword, about some combined with the strength of marriage, I smashed my way through Not you, not you. Yeah, this, this is a kid I, I know. I lay siege life. to the ancient city, decapitating its gods, emptying it of its secrets, until I stood before the throne of ascension, facing its Wait, final, final god boss. in one last it's a... terrible I can't battle where all my party members were killed, and me, without healing items, and only two HP remaining- Whoa, it's remaining, flying, bro. I struck the final You did it! Blow. I sat upon the throne of ascension. I had done it! I had beaten fear and- Is there more? The game was not over. What? I was transported to some ancient, primordial, and terrifying place, hunted by things beyond human Are you supposed experience. to die now? I, I stumbled blindly and in fear. Once again, the game reduced me to a small, terrifying... Put you in your killer. place once again. This playthrough had lasted nearly three hours. I was exhausted, but surely just a just a little more and I could be free of this awful place. And that's when I stood before some ancient glowing abyss when out of it rose. What? It, some impossible eldritch well, being. Well, why is this game so older deep? Older than time, older than space, more powerful than both. And I knew. Can you play as him? This was Not it. This this was the game's final boss, and beyond it, bro, you're in too deep. Freedom. And so, with the knowledge of everything I had lost, every death that had come before me, marriage can do I it. Stepped forward and faced this impossible god in a primordial battle it. that would determine. This guy's going crazy. The game's turning him crazy. Yeah, you're not supposed to beat him, are you? So, why put yourself You did it again this? or no? Why put yourself through the misery and pain and agony of Because you're a masochist. Game? Well, I feel like the easy answer here would be to say it's the satisfaction of overcoming something difficult. Oh yeah, or honestly, that. Honestly, I think it's more than that. When I first started playing Fear and Hunger, it didn't just feel hard, it felt like chaos mm -hmm. death felt immediate and random and unfair but you made but order out of chaos wait 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 can we talk about something real quick are you gonna ignore the shadowy figure in the darkness well honestly it still kind of feels that way the feeling i have isn't mastery but something else survival the feeling of adapting of taking this game's bullshit of every unfair and cruel thing it will do to you and 
enduring, of looking at your situation, your resources, your actual options, and using them to carve a path mm -hmm. forward. And if it doesn't work, well, you learn next time. You can, and you do best way to learn next time, because that's kind of actually how... just thought of something. So the Greeks believed that the only way you could tell a story that's effective is through comedy or tragedy, right? Which is where you get the mass thing where it's comedy and tragedy. And in a way, that's kind of applied to this game because it's only through tragedy. Like, it's through tragedy where you're learning um, how to be better at this game. Very interesting, though. Fucking life is, right? Mm -hmm. One day you're fine. And the next you're not. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, God comes out and, and gives you the middle life finger. Leaves you, or someone you love gets cancer. There's no reason to it. Mm -hmm. There is this none. This is just what your life is now, and it's easy to fall into despair. It's easy to feel like you have no options, but what you can do is try. Mm -hmm. Is look yeah. at your situation, look at the resources you do have and adapt yeah focus on what you can do it. not what you can't try and make today better than the one that came before i don't know that there's any what's he gonna go off at me at what's he gonna go off at me at what what he has such a big ego he has something to tell me oh Give can't me wait to hear feeling it feeling besides video games and fear and hunger not you nick's news some that. other kid this simulated experience of suffering of pain of losing things and surviving so yeah, this game is cruel. It is unfair. Mm -hmm. It will make you want to stop. All right, going. I need to. All right, we're gonna be Chances playing. Are, uh, we're gonna be playing this game do those sometime well. in the future. I'll announce it on my Discord, you can learn. which is in my Twitch. You can take away I mean, I'm, I'm those yeah, experiences I, and grow from it. And I think that's what's beautiful about <laughs> hunger. It's a game about moving forward in that cruelty and surviving regardless. What a great video, by the way. Also, I just realized I probably can't watch a speed run because it probably be against Twitch TOS. It probably wouldn't be blurred. There's a link. Also, real quick, let me pull up my YouTube channel because everything I post, um, all the videos I make, uh, will go here. So if you ever miss anything, it will be here. What a great video, though. In the distance. I'm subbing to this guy. This guy makes this video is great. But, um, I am gonna have to, um, for YouTube, I'm gonna have to edit this down a lot, because there definitely were parts I didn't react to, so I wanna make sure I cut those out, so that way, so I don't just leave his video in for no reason. But what a great video. I love this guy's channel. I didn't even like it. What a great video.